Okay, first and foremost, I want to give all honours and praises and glory belongeth to my Lord and Saviour, whose name is Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Waha Raka Kodash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and, he, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. And double honours to the elder apostles of Great Millstone that teach this truth well, and that continue to teach this truth well, and to the hopeful elect across the globe, and to the few brothers and sisters listening and also learning across the globe this lesson is going to be called don't you know don't you know i'm about my father's business don't you know i'm about my father's business this is all about you have a shine it's all about doing the work there's no excuses we still got men that want to be lackadaisical dragging their feet why are you here why are you here? If you don't want to do the work, why are you here? What's your MO? What's your purpose? What's your motive? Let's go into the uh, Romans 12. And we're going to go straight to 11. Not slothful in business. So we're not, this is a business. This is is business. So it says not slothful in business. What does slothful mean when you look it up? Ramiah in the Hebrew. Wicked, deceitful, treacherous. Shooting deceitful bowls. Lax, lax, a laxness. So someone that is slothful in business, they're deceitful. So if, if you have someone that's slothful in your business, what are you going to do eventually? You're going to get rid of them, replace them with another worker. Someone who can actually do the job. And this is a business. Bear me just a minute. Quickly go into that word business. Strong's G, 4229. Pragma. 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 That which has been done, a deed or accomplished fact. Spe uh, spec business, a commercial transaction. So what we're doing right now with this word, this is like a transaction. We're, we're given this word, we study, we learn, and we teach. That's part of that transaction. Okay. Fervent in the spirit. So we're supposed to be fervent. Let's quickly go into that word fervent. Because that great millstone, we look up our, we look up our words. Fervent. Fervent from Latin. Fervitinum. Fervitinum. Fervent. Boiling. Hot. Glowing. It says violent, which we're not violent. We don't we don't um condone violence. Yahweh is gonna come back to, to 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 do that. Right now we're fishing, but we're gonna be turning to hunters. Impurious, furious, um and the Lord's furious. Okay. But you can be what furious in what passion to boil to glow. To bubble, to burn. So this, this, this word should be a burning fire in you. Even Jeremiah said that. Jeremiah said, "No, I don't want. I'm not going to teach." But what? There was a, there was a, there was that zeal. Zealous. We got that word zealous as well. Full of zeal. So he's supposed to be zealous. That's another word for fervent. Zealous. Inspired. Because if you're not inspired, if you're not zealous for the Lord, what are you? That means you're lukewarm. And men have a problem with videos like this. Why? Because they're not right. Obviously, these, these lessons don't apply to someone that's going to be saved in the last hour. Obviously, this, this don't apply to a woman that's just watching. Or individual. He may, um, he's not, may not be doing videos. It doesn't apply to those. It applies to those that are in the truth, that have been called, that claim to have all this faith. Well, guess what? You have to show your faith by your works. Are we going to be saved merely by our works? No, but that was a product of our faith, of our action. You can't say you have faith, but there's no action. And as time goes and I'm finding out there's really, in Great Milton, there's only a few, few men that are really serious about this truth. Most of the men in this truth, they're, they're fake, they're phony. They don't really stand for anything. They don't really have a backbone. Okay. Then they get mad at you because they're not doing the right thing. So they get mad at you. They take it out on you. That's not my problem. That's your problem. That's between you and Yahweh Shai. That's why the script says, work at your own salvation with fear and trembling. 
Like I keep on saying, you've got men teaching in a messed up spirit. You've got men going into the woods. In a messed up spirit, where nobody can see them. And don't, don't, don't tell me, oh, but, 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 it's, it's, it's online, everybody can see. Well, alright, it's online, but what does the scripture say? Go out into the highways and byways and bid them to the marriage. If you're not doing that, you're not listening to your house, you're doing the opposite. People, men, they're just doing their own thing. Fervent in the spirit, serving the Lord. So we need to be fervent. Fervent means on fire. On fire. And don't, and don't, and, and, and all this, all this rubbish, all this. See, guys are individuals in this truth. They would say, "Well, what, what if you burn out?" Well, f first of all, you shouldn't. That's why the scriptures say, "Examine thyself." And that's why the scriptures say um, a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. So when you come to this truth, the Lord's going to give you balance. So you're telling me you don't know yourself. What's above your limit? If it's too much, you're not, if it's too much for you, you're going to what? You're going to limit it, what you're doing. Sometimes when, when, when I'm um, doing this work, I've learned to be what? More balanced in this truth. I remember when I first came in, what? Four, five videos a day. It's about less. It's about... I don't know, three or four. Well, it's about the same. But I still keep that pace. So if you're in a race, in a race, you don't stop. You still keep that pace. So you're not you're not burning out. You're still keeping that pace. A lot of men, they're not even keeping the pace. It's just, uh, what do you call it? Sp sporadic. Spurs. One minute you're here, one minute you're there. No, you're supposed to be what? Continually flowing. The scripture says, He that believe on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So if you believe, and you got to see, really go into depth. Yeah, how should I said, He that believe on me, as the scriptures have said. A lot of people, they don't really believe in the scriptures as Yeah, how has said. Why? Because they're still in their emotions. So they're not going to be flowing out rivers of living water. Because there's things that, in the scriptures, that they don't agree with. So that means you don't believe. Therefore, that water, rivers of living water, it's not going to flow out. You see what I mean? Rejoicing in hope. So we rejoice in the hope of being saved. That's why we say hope for elect. Okay? Patient. Because what? We're suffering right now. But just because you suffer, it doesn't mean you go back into the world. In tribulation. Continuing instant in prayer. And that's another thing I want to put sure. Prayer is so important. Pray. Pray. Continually. Continually. There's no limitation on how much you should be praying. Continually. And a prayer shouldn't... I've, I've heard individuals say, prayer, a prayer, uh, you should, you should, it's, it's a burden. No, a prayer, a prayer ain't a burden. If you're wicked, it's going to be a burden to you. If you don't have any faith, it's going to be a burden to you. Who says that? Who says something like that? Oh, it shouldn't be a chore. Prayer is a chore. Well, that's because you don't have faith. So men, men are actually displaying that they don't have faith. Pray up when you pray. What you feel, you feel um strong. You feel strengthened, because that's our lifeline. So all these things need to happen. If you feel you're getting weak, pray. If you feel you're lacking, pray. Okay. We got all the all the um the weapons, all the all the shield. We have everything we need. Distributing to the necessity of the same. What does distribute mean? To share. Okay. Necessity of the saints given to hospitality. Hospitality means what does it mean? You're very you're a giving person. You like to give. Not just take. You're you're not a selfish person. You like to give. And that's why anybody in this truth, by how I push this truth, you would know I'm not a selfish individual. Because I'm always thinking just just all right. Think of your I first, me and the brotherhood. But it's not a thing where I'm putting myself first in, as in a selfish way. Always thinking about the brothers. That's why I do this. Some men just do this for views. Or to them, oh, it's, the, it's just the right thing to do. But do you know why you're doing this? Do you know why you're in the truth? This is serious. I don't remember the last day. I don't remember the last time I took a day off. This is how serious I'm about this truth. So because I'm serious, I see others that are not so serious. 
But you're not hurting me, you're only hurting yourself. You're not hurting me. Because I'm doing what I have to do for you, have a shy. So you're only hurting yourself. You're not bringing me down. It's going to be you who has to answer to your shy when it's all said and done. I don't remember the last time I took a day off. I don't remember. For the, for, for the, for the little time I've been in the street, I don't remember the last time I took a day off. Even when my, my channels have been shut down, just create another channel. Upload. I'm not one for excuses. If you really believe, if you really have faith, you're going to do everything in your power. How are you going for? You still got individuals going four or five days without doing anything. So you can't take out 10, 20 minutes out of your day. You can't take five, even five minutes. There's an issue. There's an issue. It doesn't, it, do, it doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. Even if you went two days without doing this work, you'd want to come back and make up for that, them two days you missed. So there's definitely things going on. But the scriptures say that there'd be certain men that crept in unaware. And if it was not, if it's not your lot to do videos, if that's not your lot, then you have to know that. Your lot just may be a helper. It could be anything, but you've got to know what your lot is. Because once you put your hand to the plow, that means you're doing the work you started. You cannot look back. So on Romans 12 and... Yeah, we're done, we're, we're, we're done with that. Maybe just we're done with that. We're gonna go straight to. This is a service. This is every day, every day thing. And the more you do it, the more, the more you're motivated. The less you do something. Excuse me. The less you do something, the less motivated you're gonna be. You're, you're gonna have because you you haven't trained yourself. You haven't trained yourself. So, again, when the apostles put out a decree. To do the work, do what's it? One video a day. That never bothered me. I was I was excited. I was real excited. Because that's what I was doing anyway. And more. But when individuals heard that, you know a lot of individuals were upset. They felt a particular way. Because they never built themselves up to do that. And really, that decree that decree didn't even need to go out. From 2016 to 2017, it was what, three videos a week? Then from 2000, I begin, what, the beginning of 2020? What was it? What was, it was um, the decree of one video a day. One video a day. So like a 2021, one video a day. So now, individuals were not doing that. So these decrees, these decrees shouldn't even need to be put out. But the apostles are doing that because they see what's going on. Let's go to Luke 2 and 49. Let's show the mindset that Yahabashah was in. See what mindset he was in. Because the ultimate example, the scripture says, Mark the perfect man. So the perfect man was Yahabashah. So what was Yahabashah's mindset towards the work of the Lord? Yahweh, Yahweh. Okay. Luke 2 and 49. Okay, so let's start. We're gonna go straight to verse 40. This is Luke 2 and verse 40. And the child grew and much strong in the spirit. This was Yahweh Shai, filled with wisdom. And the grace of the Most High was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year, which was the custom, at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, and that's when you become a man. Okay. Okay, same with what same thing with women, that's when women become women, twelve years old. Okay. A lot of men even get offended at that. That's even a stumbling block for a lot of individuals. Okay. Ray went up to Jerusalem, but he was still with his parents because he was still under their guidance. Okay. They went to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. Okay. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Yahweh had tarried behind in Jerusalem. So he, he stayed behind. Why? Because according to his age, he was an um yeah, he was an he was an adult according to his age. So he could stay behind. And Joseph and his mother knew of, knew not of it. Okay. But they supposing him to have been in the company. So they left. Joseph and Mary left. 
went a day's journey and they sought him among their kings for an acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. Okay, so they couldn't find him. They thought Yahushua was with, with them. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in a temple. So they were three days. So they were searching everywhere for him, sitting in the midst of the doctors. The doctors are what? The lawyers, the Pharisees of the law, both hearing them and asking them questions. So Yahweh was hearing them out and asking them questions according to the law, and all that heard him were astonished. They were surprised at his understanding and his answers. So the people they were they were struck, they were at awe by what Yahweh was saying. Okay, and when they saw him, they were amazed, and his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us? Behold, thy father, and have thee sought thee sorry. So they were a bit upset, because they were worrying, they were panicking. Okay, they probably thought, ah, oh, something might have happened to him, he could have been kidnapped or anything. So they were thinking the worst case scenario, so they were surprised, and that's why they, basically, they were telling off Yahweh Shai. They were sorry, and he said unto them, this is How is it that thou sought ye, that he sought me? You were looking for me. Was they was he not that I must be about my father's business? In other words, don't you know I'm about my father's business? So Yahweh even said that was his mindset. And this is the Lord and Savior. This is this is who we follow. This is who we walk in His ways. And he said, "Don't you know I'm about my father's business?" So we're supposed to be the same way. And they understood not the same which he spake unto them. Okay. And he went down with them. So he came and followed them. And came to Nazareth. And was subject unto them. Okay. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Yahweh shall increase in wisdom. And stature. Okay. And in favour with the Most High and man. But mostly what the most high because who do we seek our favor from Yahweh Shai and how is favor going to be shown to you by well, doing what pleases him giving that effort men talk about Jacob's trouble RFID chip I hope I make it you want this place to go down but you don't you don't want this place to go down because of your actions so you don't really want this place to go down it shows how can you say you want this place to go down but you're not doing here it is, we're, we're, we're near, if you really believe, we're near, well, this is at the end of the world, this man's system, you're going to be doing everything you can to please Yahweh Shai and to find favour. So let's go to, now we're going to go to Matthews 25 and 14. to Matthew 25 and um, where is it, where is it, 14 I always say this, you, you already know, you should already know how I feel about this topic it's a very, very um, it's, this topic is close to me, it's dear to me because I'm passionate about the truth so when you see others that are not passionate about something it, it can, it can irritate you not to say that every man's going to be doing what I'm doing because that's not the case but what did Paul say? He said he wished that all men were like him. So this ain't me projecting. This is this is this ain't me projecting what I think things should be. It's the spirit that Yahweh was in it, and what the prophets, the twelve disciples, they were not lukewarm. The twelve disciples, they were not lackadaisical. They were fervent. They were hastening. So, again, even our apostle, what did he declare this year? The day of the day of haste and the day of Yahweh Shai. Many men are not in that spirit of hastening. They're comfortable. They're lackadaisical. They're complacent. Complacency is is what the lack of growth. You don't grow when you're complacent. Complacency is pride. Complacency is arrogance. Complacency is an act of defiance. Complacency is that's that spirit that you think you've already made it when you have not made it. Let's go to Matthew 25 
and 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants. And I notice as well, a lot of individuals, they don't even want to go into things like this. Because if, if a lot of individuals were, 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 were to go in this, it would shake things up. For the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling into a far country, and that man is Yahweh Shai, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. So what's supposed to be servants? For who? Yahweh Shai, and for the brethren. And the goods that were delivered, these are the goods. I want to say as well, Shabbat, Shabbat Shalawam as well. I should have started off the lesson. It's the Shabbat. It started yesterday in the UK. It started yesterday, sundown, to today it ends, what, sundown. Okay, so Shabbat Shalawam. And even that, we start, the longer we're in this trip, we, the, the more we start keeping these, these, um, these laws to the best of our ability. And unto one he gave five talents. So it tells you, everybody was given a talent. Bear me just a minute. Talent. Okay. And when you go into that word talent, it says everyone was given a talent. Let's quickly get that word talent. Strong's G, 5006. Talantiaios. 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 In the Greek, a weight, a worth. So you might have not thought you had worth in the world or wherever, wherever you were. Now you have worth. You have a worth. And Yahweh has given you that worth. So now there's, there's definitely no excuse because Yahweh now you've woken up to this truth. Yahweh has given you what? A worth of a talent. A talent of silver weighed about 100 pounds because talent was also what? Silver, gold. And also in salt. They would pay you in salt sometimes. A talent in weight. So. There's a such thing as God-given talent. So you've been given a talent. So now you've been given a talent. You've got to use it. So one was given five talents. To another two. And to another one. To every man according to his several ability. Okay. And ability is something that you're capable of doing. it. You have the ability to do it. So <laughs> you see how heavy these words are. Bear me just a minute. Bear me just a minute. Bear me just a minute. Let's see if we can quickly go into this. You, you, you for all. Ability. Have means. To have means. To be well off. To have means. So, alright. To have means. Strength, might. According to your strength. There's several definitions on it. To your force, to strength. Uh, strength, produce. Yep, to your might. Okay, according to what you can do. So you have a show already knows. So there's definitely no excuse. And straightway took his journey. So he left. Then he that have received the five talents went and traded with the same. And made them other five talents. Okay. So the individual that had five, he made ten. Why? Because he was working on what he had. And guess what? That came through reputation. He was constantly working on what he was given. Then you realize, hold on a minute, where did this come from? I never knew I could do that. Why? Because Yahweh Shai gave you that talent. You see what I mean? So he gained 10. And likewise, he that received two also gained two. So what's it? That's four. So they were doubling. But he that received one went and digged in the earth. And hid his Lord's money. So can you imagine you're giving someone something, money, something of worth, and they go and hide it. They don't do anything with it. What does that show? Unappreciation. Someone that lacks gratitude. And he digged in the earth. So he didn't just hide it. He digged it. Okay. And this is individuals that have this truth. And they don't want to do anything. They, they want a ticket on a chariot, but they don't want to do anything. And he hits his Lord's money, which is what is truth. And me, that, that would never sit well with me, knowing you know all this knowledge. And you just keep it inside. That can bug you out. Why do you think the people that come into the truth, 
and they go right back into the world, they start bugging out. They start bugging out. Why? Because the truth will always, no matter even if you try to escape from it, it will always be. I don't want to say in your mind because the scripture says when when this when um his mind is all swept and garnished, he takes seven other spirits. But you you will never be the same. You find out about the truth and go back. You'll never be the same. And after a long time, the Lord of all servants cometh and reckoneth with them. Check if them. Okay. So he that received the five times came and brought other five times, saying, Excuse me. Thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. So this is spiritual in itself. Because you know when you read Matthew 7, I believe it's Matthew 7 and 24. And it says, You shall have those that shall say, Lord, Lord, have we not done many wonderful miracles, done this and done that? You could correlate that with even this because he said his Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. So again, these are going to be those that were doing what they were supposed to be doing. That has been faithful over a few things. I will make the ruler over many things. A few things are little compared to what? The kingdom. The kingdom is going to be the many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Why did it say I will make the ruler over many things? Because the elect are going to be shared Great inheritors with Yahweh Shai. Enter into the joy of the Lord Yahweh by Sham Yahweh Shai. Okay. So they're going to be the ones that enter into that joy. Okay. This is referring to the kingdom and also the tra the chariots. You can also refer that to the chariots. Because they were doing what they were supposed to do. And they were doing it in sincerity. He also that have received five talents. Two talents came and said, Lord, I shall live us up to be two talents. Behold, I've gained two talents beside Rem. So the individual, he had two, but he gained four. So he doubled. So he had more. And that would give you more motivation to do more. So you would give more. Get more talents. If the Lord wills it. And where was I? And the Lord said unto him, More than good and faithful servant that has been faithful over a few things, I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And he that received the one talent said, Lord, I knew that I art a hard man, reaping where that has not sold and gathering where that has not strawed. This is the individual that had that one talent. And you may see it as one, but it was a talent. In other words, he this is the individual that was in the truth. He was given something. And I was afraid and went and hid that talent in the earth. This angel was afraid, shook, scared. Why are you scared for? If you've been given this talent and you've been given all the things to, to, to do, why would you be scared? The guy was just making excuses. I'm scared. Like, scared about what? You should be scared if you weren't doing what you're supposed to be doing. But that fear should have moved you. And the script says, For the tale of the Lord we persuade men. And I was afraid and went and hid that talent in the earth. Lo, there that is dying. He went and gave it back. Okay. And I know, again, I'm not going to say no names, but there was a, I've seen this, I've experienced this, because the individual that was once around, around me doing the work, but he had that same mentality. Now he's on the comment board just chatting shit. You know, being a cheerleader. You know, never, he doesn't post no scripture. He's, now he's just a cheerleader. But my thing to him is just beg for mercy. That's my thing to him. No hard feelings, just beg for mercy. You know? And it would behoove you, if you were wise men, what would you do? You would do the work. But now this guy's just a cheerleader. Okay? A quarterback armchair cheerleader on a comment board. Thou wicked and slothful servant. Bear me just a minute. And the Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. So, being slothful, that's wicked. Being lukewarm, that's wicked in the eyes of Yahweh Shai. So we, we don't just make this up. We're not saying, ah, oh, yeah, because you ain't done five videos, you're wicked. 
No, the scriptures say it's wicked. If you're slothful in the work of the Lord, that is wicked. Not because I say, because the scriptures say. Okay. New is I reap where I sold not, and gather where I have not strawed. Why? Because Yahweh Shai is the boss. Okay. The altar is therefore to put my money to the exchanges, and then at my coming I have received my own with usury. Okay. So therefore you will gain interest. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which have ten talents. And this is what you see in the truth. Men, they get all, they get, and what's it? And them talents, it's basically, that's part of your spirit. So your spirit gets stripped from you. Have you out there, have you in the middle of the woods looking bugged out? Okay. Everything you had, everything you knew gets stripped away from you, gets given to somebody else that was humble and that was able to do the work efficiently. For unto everyone that have shall be given, Okay, and shall have an abundance. So you're going to be what? Given this word, and you're going to have an abundance. Rivers of living water. But from him that have not shall be taken away, even with that which he have. So the little you had, and the little understanding, that's going to be stripped away from you. Okay, and given to somebody else. And cast you the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. Right back into this world. It shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth because you could still call yourself claiming to be in the truth but really you're in the world when the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him then shall he sit upon the front of his glory and before him shall be gathered all the na all nations and he shall separate them one from another as the shepherd shepherd his sheep from the goats okay and he shall 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 set the sheep on his right hand the elect but the goats on the left <sighs> Then shall the king say unto them, his, in his right hand, Come ye, bless of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That's why we're doing this. We want to be crowned by Yahweh Shai. We want to be counted worthy. Massive responsibility. Let's go to Luke 12 and 48. And the more you, the more you, and I feel that there is a heavy weight on my shoulders because I feel like the more I've been given, the more I know, the more of a heavy responsibility that is for me. But guys don't understand that. Well, guys may understand that, but they choose not to act upon it. Let's go to Luke 12 and 48, Baba Kasha. This is Luke 12 and 40. Let's start at. Yeah, there's some good stuff here, but let me just a minute. Let's start at 43. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. So, Yahweh Shai. When he comes back, he wants those that are still faithful. Of a truth, I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he have. But and if that evil servant, if that servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delay if he's coming. Because men, are, men don't really believe this. Because if you believe your house is coming, he's on his way. You be, you be on fire for this truth. And shall begin to beat the men, servants and maidens. Basically, you start to act in a deceitful manner, okay? And to eat and drink with the drunken, go right back into the world, and the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him. Speaking of Yahweh, and at that hour when he is not aware of, and will cut him asunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. So, in other words, your portion is going to be with those of the world and the unbelievers, even though you were you were you were in the truth. For a while. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not to himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. So, again, this is about preparing ourselves, preparing our minds. Okay? But he that knew not, and it says he shall be beaten with many stripes, so there's going to be a, a more severe punishment, because you knew. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten. Shall be beaten with few stripes. So, an individual that never knew, about this, he was just ignorant. Ignorant, he's just gonna be beaten with few shots, but he's still gonna have a punishment. But for unto whosoever much is given, so the more you've been given, the more talents, whatever you've been given, you know, history, you know, the laws, whatever you know of him shall be much more required. Much required. So now there's gonna be much required, much that's, that's needed, much that's expected. And to whom men have committed much, if you've been, if you have has given you more, of him shall they ask the more. And it's the same way in a workplace, wherever you are. 
you want that high a lot of people they want um they want to become manager or co-supervisor that means there's more there's more on your plate so it's the same thing in this truth it's nothing different just like the fo football you want to be captain more there's more on your plate You can you, you can you can um acquaint this with anything. A boxer, you want to be a higher level boxer, professional. There's more on your plate. Now you're in professionals. They now they're trying to. It's different from amateurs. They're trying to take off your head. Everybody's trying to take off your head. Literally take off your head. So there's more on your plate. Ah oh, man. And remember what the scriptures say in Luke 7 and 17. And after you've done all these things, the videos, brotherly, charitable, all those things. After you've done those things, still say I'm an unprofitable servant. This is the mentality we're supposed to have. And in, in the Apocrypha, what does it say? See it, seeing that um, we messed up, we went astray, seeking 10 times more. 10 is double figures. This is what we need to be doing. No slowing down. Okay. So I want to shut off here. Lord willing, this was edifying. And until the next time, shut up to the hopeful elect. Shut up.